This scene in Surrey Hills has caused plenty of controversy in recent weeks. 40 Days for Life supporters participate in what they call a vigil outside the preterm women's health clinic. They hope to discourage women from choosing abortion, and Paul Hanrahan explains why. To make it clear, I support no abortions. There is no abortion that's better for mum, and certainly not better for the baby, right? There isn't a circumstance that's going to be where I'm going to say, oh, well, abortion would be justified in that circumstance, right? Never. But others argue that these so-called vigils create hostile environments for women accessing the clinics. We think it's really disrespectful and disgraceful that um, these groups are targeting women at a really vulnerable place in their lives. Uh, if they want to see change in, in this area, they should be doing it through lobbying their politicians. They shouldn't be targeting vulnerable women who are often in really difficult circumstances. 40 Days for Life is an international pro-life movement that involves groups of supporters holding vigils, like this one, outside abortion clinics worldwide. Paul Hanrahan says that they aren't there to harass women, rather they offer support for women who choose to be mothers. We're saying we will help you. We will give you the money, we will give you the legal aid, we will give you the medical aid, we'll do all those things. I've seen so many women change their mind because we're there saying, don't do this, we can help you, and we do. But Claire Pullen from Sydney for Choice says groups like 40 Days for Life don't help women to feel supported. She says that anti-choice vigils make women feel shamed and uncomfortable for using and working in the clinic. They find it really traumatic, um, they find it difficult, they don't like it. Um, there's some of the, the staff have talked a lot about what it's like to have to walk through a picket every day to get to your workplace and some of the names that they've been called. Um, look, I think everyone has a right to have their opinion. I think people should have a right to express themselves and have moral views about things that they do and other people do. But I think that ends when you're restricting someone else's choice. And that's what these people are trying to do. Is they're saying, not only will I not do this myself, but you can't do it either. Mel Fernandez says that the women's electoral lobby would like to see exclusion zones put into place around abortion clinics in New South Wales to prohibit anti-choice vigils from picketing women. It's really important to ensure that there are protections around women experiencing um, these sort of circumstances when they're in a vulnerable position. What we want to see in New South Wales and adopted in all states is exclusion zone legislation. So similar to what's in place in um, the Tasmanian uh, reform bill that has been passed recently, having an exclusion zone to protect women going into clinics. But Paul Hanrahan argues that exclusion zones aren't necessary because pro-life vigils don't harass women, they support them. He says that pro-choice groups focus only on a woman's right to choose and offer women nothing in terms of support. Who have they helped? Why don't they set up homes for women who make choices to keep their baby? Are they funding that? Are any of those pro-choice lobbyists down outside that place saying if you choose to keep your baby, we'll support you? It's incredibly patronising. Do women have support groups when they have their wisdom teeth out? Do they have support groups when they start on contraception? Do they have support groups when you break your toe? But why is it that this one medical procedure is something that women need special help and are especially fragile about? I just don't accept the idea that women aren't robust enough to make their own decisions. Christy King for Between the Sheets.